This is section 8.2, part one. You can actually wait until April 12th to turn in your 8.2, part one homework, but technically it's due April 5th. Uh, you have limited number of tries on your homework, so you might wanna read that before you do your homework. And 8.2, part two is gonna be really short, and so I'll try and get those lecture notes up and the video up before spring break so that if you want to get ahead and just do all of 8.2 at once, you certainly can do that. The reason why we want to learn how to solve differential equations with power series is that in most cases, if the coefficients are variable, like these differential equations, then this is the way you've got to do it. The methods we learned in chapter four are for constant coefficient linear differential equations, or in the case you have a Cauchy-Euler, the coefficients can be variable, but they have to be very particular. So let's just review a little bit about power series in section 8.2, and then we'll actually use power series in 8.3 to solve a differential equation. All right, a power series is an infinitely long polynomial, and typically it's centered at x naught, oftentimes it will be centered at zero, in which case it looks like cn x to the n, n equals zero to infinity, because your x naught is zero. Back in math, in Calc 2, we learned how to find the interval of convergence for a power series. That was the set of all x where the power series converges, and the radius which was half the width of the interval of convergence. And I don't know if you remember this, but I had a flow chart for you, and you used the root test or the ratio test to find rho, and then you would set rho less than one in order to get your interval. You've already done that, and so we're not gonna do that again, and I didn't assign any homework problems in this section where you actually have to find the radius of convergence. So let's move on to the two big topics for today, which are one, adding power series, and two, re-indexing power series so that you can add them, um, arithmetic with power series. All right, so adding power series. If you have two power series in x to the n and they both start in the same place, you can add them by simply adding their coefficients. So for example, if we have um, this as our f of x and this power series as our g of x, then notice they both start at zero and the, the um, variable is, is both, it's x to the n in both cases. So we can simply, let me erase this stuff, add f plus g is going to be the sum n equals zero to infinity. We just add the coefficient, the coefficient. So this one quarter cn, that's my a n above, and my n cn would be my b n. So I take one quarter cn plus n cn, that's my a n plus b n all times x to the n, and that's my new coefficient. Now, let's clean that up a bit. I don't want two cn's there, so I'm gonna rewrite that as the sum n equals zero to infinity of parenthesis one quarter plus n, a single cn, x to the n. And there we go. All right. Let's do it again, except now we're going to add f and g. g starts at 1, f starts at 0. In order to add, they both have to start in the same place. And for them both to start at the same place, you have to have them start at the higher of the two numbers. So we need to make them both start at 1. So the way we can make f of x start at 1 is here I've written out some terms of f of x. This is the n equals zero term right here. Here's n equal one, here's n equal two. 
And so I can simply rewrite f by culling out the n equals 0 term, that's here, and then writing the rest as the infinite sum 3cnx to the n, where n starts at 1. I don't want to, but if I did want to, I could have um, pulled out the first two terms, 3c0 plus 3c1x, and then written the rest. But now, since I pulled out the n equals 0 and n equal 1 term, I would go n equal 2 to infinity of 3cnx to the n. But since I wanted to start my power series at 1, I only wanted to pull off this term. So f plus g is, I'm going to write down what I have for f above, 3c0 plus the sum n equals 1 to infinity of 3cn x to the n. And then I'll add my g. My g is the sum n equal 1 to infinity of ncn x to the n. Okay, and then add the 3 c naught just lives, it just sits out there on its own. But now I can combine these guys as a single power series, n equal 1 to infinity, and I add the coefficients. So I have 3 c n plus n c n. Let me do my scrap work over here. I have 3 c n plus n c n which is 3 plus n c n. So my coefficient is 3 plus n c n, and all of that is times x to the n. And that's my answer. Okay. I suggest you pause the video, do this one, and then when you think you've got it, turn it back on and watch me do the answer. Okay, so we're back. Um, G starts at 2, F starts at 0. That means I need to start F at 2. So F I can rewrite as I pull off the 0 term. 0 factorial x to the 0. 0 factorial is 1. x to the 0 is 1. So my first term is 1. And then when n is 1, I get 1 factorial, which is 1 times x. Okay, and that's the n equals 0, n equal 1. And then I can pick up and go from 2 to infinity, n factorial x to the n. So f plus g of x is 1 plus x plus... I was going to do this all at once, but I'll go slow. n equal 2 to infinity n factorial x to the n plus, now my g is n equal 2 to infinity 4x to the n, which is, and you could have um, done this step in your head. I'd be fine if you just went straight to this last step, which is 1 plus x plus the sum n equals 2 to infinity, uh, I add my coefficients. My coefficients are n factorial plus 4, and all of that is times x to the n. All right. Now, here's a topic that we won't get back to until we, we talk about section, until we do section 8.3. But it'll be easier if I can just remind you of this fact then than have to introduce it then. So here we go. When, when, if a polynomial is 0 for all x, you can show that all the coefficients have to be 0. Well, a power series is an infinitely long polynomial. So if you have an infinitely long polynomial that's 0 for all x, you can say that all the coefficients have to be 0. So what would that look like in real life? If this power series here, this expression, is 0 for all x, then what are the conditions on the cn's? Well, the first condition, the first coefficient is c0. c0 is 0. 
That has to be true. The coefficient of x is c1 plus 1. That has to be 0. That tells us that c1 is negative 1. Then the next coefficient is this guy, n c n plus 1 minus c n has to be 0. And that's for n, all the n in that summation. That's n equal 2, 3, 4, dot, dot, dot. So let's look at this last condition a little more carefully. Typically, we'd want to solve for the higher index. This tells us cn plus 1 is cn over n for n equal 2, 3, 4. This is called a recurrence relation. Recurrence relation. And we'll talk more about that in section 8.3. All right. Now, I know you've seen this before if you took Calc 2 with me, because in order to find the sum of a geometric series, we always had to re-index so the series started at 0. Um, we're going to be doing the same thing here, except we might not want to start at 0. But the rule is, whatever you do in the formula here, you have to do the opposite down here. So for example, if we look at this first power series, if I want to write this as a power series in x to the n, not in x to the n plus 1. So I want the exponent of n to be, sorry, the exponent of x to be n. That means I need to subtract 1 everywhere in that formula. So I, the cn would become cn minus 1. The n plus 1 squared would become n squared, because I have n plus 1, but then I'm subtracting 1. The x to the n plus 1 becomes x to the n. And to modify, just so that I haven't changed the actual power series, since I subtracted 1 everywhere in the formula, I need to add 1 to where I start. Okay. Now, if you're not sure you did it right, just write out a couple terms. For instance, Let's see where this guy starts. When n is 0, we get c naught uh, x. And then when n is 1, we get c1. Um, 1 plus 1 is 2 times 4 x squared, dot, dot, dot. OK. Now, we rewrote that power series, but hopefully we didn't change it. So it should still start with c naught x. So now when n is 1, I get c naught x. And then when n is 2, I get 4c1x squared. So yeah, it's the same power series. It just looks different. OK, now suppose I want to keep it as a power series in x to the n, but instead of starting at 1, I want to start at 3. That means I need to pull out the n equal 1 term and the n equal 2 term by hand, and then start the power series at 3. So when n is 1, put 1 in for n, you get c naught uh, x, because n is 1, plus when n is 2, I get 4c1 x squared. Okay, then I can pick up and go from 3 to infinity with the exact same formula, cn minus 1 n squared x to the n. And we'll have to do that a lot. We'll, we'll have to um, take a power series that starts in a certain place and pull off a couple of terms, maybe one term, or maybe two terms, or maybe three terms, and then, and then write the rest in closed form. So we're going to do, um, yikes, a lot of examples here. 
it shouldn't take too long. Um, and then I've got a couple practice problems for you to do at home, and the solutions to those practice problems are at the end of these lecture notes. Okay, so it's the last two that take a little longer. The first two go pretty quick. The instructions are rewrite the expressions as a power series involving x to the n. And then combine all series at the highest starting point. Okay, so the first one only has a single power series, so we don't have to do part two. We only have to do part one. Uh, this is n minus two, so that means I need to add two everywhere in that formula. So everywhere I see an n, I replace it with an n plus two. So n becomes n plus two, n plus one becomes n plus three, n squared plus 1 becomes n plus 2 quantity squared plus 1. And then cn becomes cn plus 2. And x to the n minus 2 becomes x to the n. And uh, the old power series started at 2. I subtract, uh, no, I added 2 here, so that means I subtract 2 at the base. So this one's going to start at 0 and go to infinity. All right, so that was pretty short. Next one, both power series are already in x to the n, so that's not an issue, but we do want to add them. One starts at 0, one starts at 2. So when they start in different places, you need to write them both so they start at the highest starting point, which is 2. That means we need to take this guy and start it at 2. So when n is 0, we get c0. And then when n is 1, we get c1x. And then we'll write it n equal 2 to infinity cnx to the n. So all of that is just the first power series. And then we add on the second power series. n equal 2 to infinity n c n x to the n. OK, and then the last step is to combine these two power series. So we get c0 plus c1x plus a single summation sign starting at 2 and going to infinity. Now I'm going to add the coefficients. I've got a cn, do my scrap work over here, cn plus ncn is n plus 1 cn. So n plus 1 cn x to the n. That's my answer. Okay. Fortunately, if I'm talking too fast, you can um, slow me down. And if I'm talking too slow, you can speed me up. We're almost there. Hang in there. Um, I started a solution to these next two, um, so you wouldn't have to see me write quite as much. But we've got, in this case, two power series. Neither one starts at, neither one is written in x to the n. So we need to re-index them both so they're written in terms of x to the n. That means for this first one, what I have to do is add 1 everywhere in the formula and subtract 1 down here. So you can see I did that. My new power series starts at 0. The n becomes n plus 1. Cn becomes Cn plus 1, x to the n. Now for the second guy, I need to add 2 everywhere in this formula. So that means I'm going to subtract 2 from 3. And that's why the second power series you see starts at 1. And then I replaced n with n plus 2 everywhere. And I, I'm right here. OK. So one of these power series starts at 0, one starts at 1. That means I need to rewrite them so they both start at 1. So that means I need to take this guy and cull off the 0 term. So when n is 0, I get c1, that's n equals 0, and then I go from 1 to infinity the rest of the power series. 
All right, and, the, and then I just brought the other guy down. And now I'm ready to do combine. So I've got C1 plus one big old summation sign, n equals one to infinity. Um, they don't have any C's in common. So what I'm gonna do is put a big set of brackets and the first coefficient is n plus one, cn plus one. And then I'm gonna add the second coefficient, which is n plus two, n plus one, cn plus two. All of that is the coefficient of x to the n. And you just have to leave it like that. Since this one is cn plus one and that's cn plus two, you can't combine them like we did on the one above. Okay, so there's our answer. All right, last one. Here we've got three power series. The first and the last already are in x to the n. So the only one we need to re-index is the middle guy. We need to add two everywhere in the formula for the middle guy. And so down here, the middle guy, instead of starting at two, is gonna start at zero. And you can see I already went through and I replaced the n with an n plus two everywhere in the formula. I simply brought down the first power series, I brought down the third power series, and I did one other thing. I took this two out here, and I moved it in to the power series. So that's the blue two here. And I had to do the same thing with the three. Take the three and move it inside, and so that's the blue three you see there. All right, now we have three power series. They're all in x to the n. Um, one starts at zero, one starts at one, sorry about that, and one starts at two. That means we need to start them all at two. So, um, so at this point, you need to um, write small because it's gonna have to fit, um, fit on one line. The first guy I'm just gonna bring down. I don't have to do anything to that. n equals two to infinity n, n minus one, cn, x to the n. The second one, um, I wanna start it at two, so I need to pull off the zero term and the one term. When n is zero, I get four c two, x to the zero, so just four c two. And then when n is one, I get uh, three times two is, Six, six, six times two is 12, C3, X. Okay, and then I can just write the rest of the power series, two to infinity, and just copy down the formula. Two, N plus two, N plus one, CN plus two, X to the N. All right, so all of that is the middle power series. And now for this last guy, he starts at one and I wanna start it at two. So I only have to pull off the n equal one term. So that would just be three C one X, because n is one, so three C one X, and then sum n equal two to infinity of three N C N X to the N. Whew. All right, now let's clean this up. Um, let's take the terms that don't involve a summation sign and put them in front. We've got a 4C2, and then the coefficient of x will be 12C3 plus C1. Nope, plus 3C1. Okay, that's the coefficient of x. So that takes care of the, um, the terms that aren't inside of a summation sign. Now, 
We go n equal 2 to infinity, and we're going to add this, this, and this. And when we add those together, they'll all be multiplied by x to the n. Now, let me bring down this middle guy first. 2, n plus 2, n plus 1, c, n plus 2. And then notice that the, the first circle and the last circle both involve c, n. So I can combine those coefficients, and I did it down here in my scrap work. I took n times n minus 1 cn, that's the first coefficient from the first power series, 3n cn, that's the coefficient from the last one, and then um, I distributed the n, and then I, what did I do? Then I, we have, that's n squared minus n plus 3n, cn, which is n squared plus 2n times cn. So the coefficient of cn is n squared plus 2n cn. It's really sloppy to write, um, to leave it like this, n times n minus 1 cn plus 3 cn. Not only is it sloppy, okay, that's bad, but um, it won't get us anywhere in section 8.3. In section 8.3, if there's a coefficient in common like cn, you want to write just a single instance of that. So that might mean factoring or combining like terms. But at this point, this guy's done. This is as good as it gets. All right, when we finish up this section, and I promise you it won't take long, we'll be talking about taking derivatives of power series. But that's it for now.